Okay, I figure now that I have a new duplicator i3, I will show you guys my leveling procedure. First things first, the machine has to be tight. I got this for 100 bucks on Craigslist, and this thing was loose as all hell. It just wiggled all over the place. You are never going to have a successful print if you do not have this frame rigid, so this needs to be rigid. If it's flopping, there are two screws on each side here. Um, two going in and two coming out. You must make sure all four of them are absolutely tight. Don't destroy them, but make sure they're tight. Next thing you do, you take the four adjustment knobs and you tighten them all the way down. Squeeze the bed all the way down and spin them until they're tight. Okay, just squeeze the bed, spin them until they're tight. Okay, you want the bed in the lowest possible position. Do a home all. After you do a home all, you disable your steppers. Okay, and you manually move the Z position until something, I don't care what it is, anything, something fits in there. All right, this is touching. All right, it's loose. I can move it around, but I can't lift it. Okay, so the, this here is actually touching this just barely. Then what you do is you take it out, you move your extruder over, and you do the same thing here. Okay, make sure you have the same gap on both sides. If the gap is not the same, uh, you grab the screws back here and just give it a little turn until it is the same. Doesn't matter what the height is, as long as it's the same. Okay, once you have it the same on both sides, then you do a home all again, and that's when we begin leveling the bed. One moment, I'll pause until I get ready for that stage. Okay, then you go to home all, and you let the printer do its thing. Once the printer does its thing, you back off, you go to quick settings, you go to disable steppers again. Okay, this will allow you to move them around. Now it's very important that you do not touch this. Make no contact with this and don't jostle the printer to make contact with this or you'll defeat the point. First thing I do is, you know, I'm not exactly the most mobile, so I gently lift the bugger up and I look. Okay, the nozzle is significantly above the um, thing here. Hang on a second, I'm bring it down for you to see this. With a gap that big, I just might go directly to my glass plate. So, one moment while I get to that point. Well, this kind of sucks. I went and bought some 8 by 8 inch mirror panels. They are too small. The bed is quite a bit bigger than eight inches. I didn't realize that. Because I also, I thought I got the wrong print and Z surface. But no, nope, it's exactly the right size. The mirror panel is just too damn small. So how big is this? Put this up here so you can see it. It is eight and five eighths inches. And this panel isn't even eight inches, it's seven and three quarters. Oh, that's kind of annoying. In metric, we are looking at 220 millimeters. So it's 220 by 220 is the actual print surface area, not eight inches. Not only is it not eight inches, but this damn thing that says eight by eight inches isn't even eight inches, it's seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters. That kind of sucks. I will be back when I figure out what to do about that. Well, I don't have a properly cut piece of glass, so that is a very temporary solution. I have uh, my piece of glass under here with my Print and Z just strapped on top of it. That always makes me jump. But um, it won't be perfect, but it'll be better than the stock bed until I can get the proper piece of glass cut for this. So one moment while I prep for leveling. All right, now what I'm doing here is I put this in the middle, okay, in the bed all the way back, and I turn both these nuts equally until I like the distance I see between the nozzle, there it is, between the nozzle and the bed. And then I move this to the left, and I fine tune this one until there's just the tiniest bit of a gap. Touch it and you should see the gap form, okay? Same thing over here. See, that one's too big. You probably can't see it in the video, but there's an actual visible gap there. 
So I will adjust this one until that gap goes away. There we go. Good enough, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this bed forward and adjust the rear end until I like what I see there. That's gonna be hard to do on video, so one moment. Little trick, if you can't bend down like I do, is just use your finger underneath here and grab the belt so this doesn't slide because if you let go of the bed, it just slides and you can't hold the bed because then you're moving it, okay? So just put your finger on the belt to keep it from sliding and look down there and do your adjustments until you get close. You want just the tiniest bit of a gap. That's all you gotta do to level. At least that's all you do is to do your rough level. Now what we do is we print something and we put a brim around it, another brim, a skirt. And I'm going to do that next. One moment. Okay, we are gonna start printing again. I had an extruder issue. The plastic wasn't feeding right, but I fixed that. Okay, as you can see, it's doing its skirt. It's a nice bead. Might be a little too close in the back, not by much though. That's a good bead actually. That's just leftover plastic that was attached to the nozzle. You can ignore that. There we go. Now what you do is you tweak it as you do it. Uh, I like that there, I'm gonna leave it. Now let's do in the model. Let's we'll see what it does. See, I think that's a little bit too squished. So I'm gonna live adjust by tightening a little bit. Tightening a little bit. That's better. See how it's got more color? It's not quite as squished. Now starting the first layer. Still a little too close. Tighten that down a little. Tighten that down a little. There we go. Now it's got a little more color. It's not as transparent. See? It was transparent. A little too close. Now it's just about right, I think. Alright, I like what I'm seeing so far. I might bring this a little closer to the bed. And I'm going to bring the speed up. So we go to um, quick settings, I think. Yeah, speed multiplier. Let's bring it up to 100%. There we go. This is just a simple vase. I'm going to let it do a little more of this and I'll be right back. There you go. I cranked it up to 250%. And you can see this is a bone stock Wanhao duplicator i3 V2.1. I think it's a 2.1. It's got the metal wheels. But Wanhao duplicator. The only modifications I've made to this printer are to put a glass plate on it with a, with a print in Z surface and my SD card reader. It's a bone stock machine. And it's capable of doing a first layer that nice and this is at way over speed that's it that's all you gotta do to level so let's go over this again first thing you do is you tighten down all of your knobs full tight okay? you get a rough level using your eyeball you begin printing a skirt you dial it in until you get that nice squish all right See on the end here how it's transparent? That was too close. You don't want it that transparent. You want to be able to see the color of your filament. Okay? So if it's transparent, adjust it. If it's too dark or it's not flattening, it's not squishing, adjust it. Just don't be afraid. I mean, it's, it's just a couple cents worth of plastic. Oh, I wonder if it can even do it that fast. Let's find out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> These are really are capable little machines. And this is using 11.99 a kilogram PLA I got off Amazon. Prime shipped, 11.99 a kilogram. This stuff prints really nice. And you can see this printer has no problem going fast. It's almost fast enough to strobe affect the camera. I'll let it go, see what it does. But you really, I don't typically run them that fast, but what the hell. 
So, um, as we were saying, hey, focus, damn you. Um, make sure your screws are tight. Tighten your bed all the way down. Put your glass plate on with your print surface. Make sure your nozzle clears. I am barely clearing. I have very little adjustment available, but it was enough, as you can see. It's printing just fine. Come on. Tone down. Having trouble getting my hair goes. Uh, I'm under extruding. It's too fast. I guess that was too much to hope that this thing can go that fast. Quick speed multiplier. Bring it back down to something sane. <laughs> That was a little fast for the stock extruder. As you can see, it's now once again extruding correctly. And even that's a bit fast. It's still running at 150%. This thing is capable stock. I want to get rid of that fan, though. I like being able to see my nozzle. I've already got one printed to replace it from my other printer, one of the Cobra ones that wraps around like that so you can still see the nozzle. Um, but yeah, it's, that's it. That's all you got to do. Don't be afraid to live adjust. You can't really screw it up. If it doesn't come out right, stop, restart the print, and continue live adjusting. Each time you do it, you're going to get it closer and closer and closer every time. So don't worry about it. Don't be afraid. Make sure your X gantry is level. Make sure your X gantry is level with the bed fully tightened down. Okay? Otherwise, you have a constantly shifting level you're messing with, and you don't want to get in that game. Um, make sure all these screws are tight. Make sure these screws down here are tight. Not those four, the ones in here. Uh, yeah, that one right there. See it? And then you have another one that goes from the inside out this way. Um, that's it. I hope that helps you out with leveling your one how duplicator i3. This, these instructions work for any um, i3 based printer that has leveling screws to level the bed. Um, one of the biggest things is to make sure this X gantry is level. It will lose its tune over time, and um, that's a problem because you're going to be adjusting your bed level thinking it's off. It's not. It's this moving. So keep an eye on that. Make sure it's always the same. And that's it. Enjoy printing.